All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend four of my tickets and put a 7-4 sticker on my grizzly bear with a beanie on it and attack you. Um, I'll block with my Dark Confident and my Urza's Mishra's Self-Replicator? Ah, but your Urza's Mishra's Self-Replicator has Shadow thanks to the Shadow sticker you placed on it last turn. It can't block my grizzly what? bear with a beanie because my grizzly bear with a beanie doesn't have Shadow. It does? Wait, what? Reading the card explains the card. What? What? Stickers. What? what? Blah, 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 blah. They keep dragging me back in. Recently, Wizards of the Coast unveiled some features of the upcoming set Unfinity, the latest in a line of unproducts designed as comedic and experimental versions of magic sets. Among the new information about the set, it was also revealed that silver border cards are going away, replaced by a mix of black border cards in unsets that will be legal in constructed formats like Legacy and Vintage and Commander. As a result of this, the wacky, experimental, unset mechanics of Unfinity would be coming to black border formats, among them the controversial use of stickers that you peel off and place on other magic cards in play. Now, unsets traditionally have had some wild and wacky twists on card design, and have even been de facto testing grounds for card designs that would later make their way into standard sets down the road. But few, if any, Magic the Gathering players ever had an issue with unsets because either the idea of playing with experimental and silly magic cards was your jam or it wasn't and you focused on the next Black Border set. Personally speaking, I loved unsets. They're super cool. And Silver Border cards were in fact beloved by some but hated by none because while casual players could and did enjoy them in casual play, Silver Border cards were not legal in constructed formats. And thus, Wizards of the Coast had the freedom to create cards as strange and esoteric as they liked and players could choose whether or not they they wanted to explore and enjoy their innovation and humor. Famously, Magic the Gathering personalities like Louis Scott Vargas and Gabby Sparts used silver border cards in their personal vintage cube. I myself not only included several silver border cards in my personal cube, but I have a battle box of four silver border commander decks that I often ask friends if they're interested in jamming a game with in between games of another format. And I was always quite a fan of using the silver border as a way to do IP crossovers, like the special My Little Pony and Transformer Silver Border Legendaries. Ha, ah, but just as IP crossovers were removed from the realm of Silver Border and made just a part of, well, what magic cards are now, so too have Silver Borders been just done away with, making unset mechanics just part of what Magic the Gathering is now. Rather than putting a silver border on Unfinity cards, some cards from the set will have a small, hard to see, easy to confuse, even by Wizards of the Coast themselves, silver acorn stamp on them. Any card that doesn't have an acorn stamp will be legal in eternal constructed formats such as Commander, Legacy, Popper, Vintage, etc. This announcement was made with a sample card that will be legal when Unfinity releases, Saw in Half. This card is ripe with combo potential, going infinite with dual caster mage and probably other stuff too. With this card alone, we can see that even if the vast, vast majority of eternal legal unset cards are powered down to avoid them being must-haves, many are still going to find a home especially in formats like Commander. The beauty of Silver Border cards was that you could opt to play with and against them or opt not to, and this has been taken away. And now, not only is the humor and wackiness of Unsets an eternal part of Magic gameplay that you cannot opt out of, so too are the mechanics it brings. Enter... <sighs> Stickers. Unfinity will introduce the use of stickers to Commander, Legacy, 
even popper. Stickers! According to Mark Rosewater, stickers are game pieces that modify the features of your pre-existing cards. Everything from the card's name, artwork, abilities, and even power and toughness can be altered with a sticker. Some modifications, specifically those that alter abilities and power and toughness, require you to pay a certain number of tickets to choose them. Tickets are functionally similar to energy from Kaladesh. Once you generate a ticket, it won't disappear until it's been used. You get tickets the same way you would get energy, by resolving spells that give you some number of tickets. Cut all that? Good, because it's a regular part of Magic the Gathering now, but wait, I've barely just begun with the sticker mechanic. Stickers remain on the card that they've been attached to while the card moves between public zones, the battlefield, the graveyard, and exile. If a card moves to a private zone, such as the hand or library, the stickers will be removed and returned to the sticker sheet. Stickers come on sheets, one of which can be found in every pack of Unfinity. There are 48 unique sticker sheets sheets, each coming with three name stickers, three art stickers, two ability stickers, and two power and toughness stickers. Apart from the power and toughness stickers, no two sticker sheet will contain the same sticker. Hang on, not done yet. There's more to the way stickers and sticker sheets work. Again, now an eternal part of Magic the Gathering. When drafting Unfinity, you'll keep all the sticker sheets you open as you don't draft them like you do other cards. When playing your games of Limited, you only have access to the sticker sheets that you personally opened. In constructed formats such as Commander and Legacy and Popper, you are allowed to select 10 sticker sheets to bring to a tournament. At the start of each game, you will randomly select three sticker sheets to have access to for the duration of that game. After you sideboard, you'll select a new three random sheets for your second game of the match. If this sounds like the most convoluted Magic the Gathering mechanic to date, that's because it is the most convoluted Magic the Gathering mechanic to date. Who asked for this? For stickers. Now, to be fair, we haven't even seen most of the sticker cards that will be constructed legal yet, and it's entirely possible that most or even all the sticker cards will cost too much mana or have too weak an effect to be worthy of consideration in Legacy and Popper and certainly Vintage. Though, you know, all it takes is one or two to slip through and bam, it's companions all over again. Stickers in every deck. It's worth noting that they have already clarified sticker rules in a way that has a lot of potential in 1v1 formats, in that adding an Urza's sticker to Jace the Mind Sculptor will allow that Jace to activate through a pithing needle that had named Jace the Mind Sculptor, since the card's name is now Urza's Jace the Mind Sculptor. So okay, that has legacy relevance already, and there's many more cards to come. And in Commander? Come on, even if sticker spells are weak, they're going to have myriad potential combos and uses in a format like that. Just as companions became a regular part of magic, and dice rolls are growing, initiative, entering the dungeon, all that stuff, so too now is this a game where you should keep some stickers handy. This is frustrating to me, as someone who cares deeply about the game and has been invested in it for a long, long time. In terms of what they literally do, stickers are not that different from the ability counters introduced in Ikoria or the shield counters in Streets of New Capenna. An exalted sticker might as well be an exalted counter. Mark Rosewater has said the physical stickers found in packs are a play aid. You can represent the sticker with a scrap of paper if you'd prefer. The only true difference between a sticker and a counter is that the modification of a sticker lasts as the card moves between public zones. Which brings me to the next question. Why was this necessary? I mean, I'm not really a fan of stickers all over my magic cards, are you? Is this true innovation as unsets once strove to be, or just gimmick for gimmick's sake? And if it is just gimmick for gimmick's sake, to be silly, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, being silly, as long as we, the larger player base, do have the ability to opt out. And we did have a way to opt out. It was called the Silver Border and Unsets, and it worked brilliantly. So why did our existing system of Silver Border cards need to be done away with? Why do stickers need to be eternal legal? God knows what other goofy and yes, sometimes even asinine unset mechanics are going to be made just a part of magic now. And if not in this unset, 
than the next. And judging by Watsi's decision for stickers to fall into the okay for sanctioned play side of that arbitrary line, it's clear that the people in charge of drawing the line do not have a good enough finger on the pulse of what the majority of the player base wants. The reasoning behind many of the decisions that Watsi has made that highlight this lack of awareness or interest in what much of the player base wants tends to be that it's for the casual players. To be clear, I am in no way saying that casual players shouldn't be catered to, but if the goal was to cater to casual players, then there was no need to make any cards from this set legal and sanctioned play, right? And you know, the complexity of selecting the sticker sheets that you'll be allowed to play with in a sanctioned, constructed match is on par with other complicated and convoluted mechanics introduced recently. Day and Night from the recent Innistrad set, Venture into the Dungeon and Initiative from the two D&D sets, and even the Companions from Ikoria, which have been errated to the point of not even functioning the way the card describes them as functioning. This is all this growing pattern in just the last few years. I would argue that many, if not all of those mechanics are needlessly convoluted, certainly complicated, and they're pushing mechanics in a way that is leading to mistakes. Take the Day-Night mechanic, for example. This was Wizard Wizards of the Coast's reimagination of the werewolf mechanic from the original Innistrad set. And from a flavor perspective, they did a great job. What they missed out on, unfortunately, was the effect Day Night has on gameplay. Cards that care about whether it's day or night don't just affect gameplay when they're on the battlefield. Even after they've been removed, day and night must be tracked for the remainder of the game, in case another card is played later on that cares whether it's day or night. This is a nightmare for paper play, particularly in a format like Commander, where you have twice as many turns to keep track of the time of day. If none of these day-night cards were powerful enough to make it past standard, maybe this wouldn't be such a big problem, but of course, there were werewolves good enough to see eternal play. Outland Liberator, for instance, is a format staple in Vintage. Commander is filled with werewolf tribal that gobbled up some of these cards. Players don't have the opportunity to opt out of mechanics that make playing the game worse, and barring a wholesale ban of a mechanic, which is never gonna happen as the companion errata has taught us, there really isn't anything to do except just say, all right, day, night, it's a part of Magic the Gathering now. Stickers, you got your sticker sheet? We're dealing with stickers. There's no take backsies here. Once sticker cards are legal, they're legal forever in Commander, in Legacy, in Popper, in Vintage, in whatever. But there's also an impact that stickers have on the game beyond their function, their humor. Stickers, like unsets have always been, are really, really silly. You're literally peeling off a beanie and putting it on Karn, or peeling off the word Urzas and putting it on whatever. Now, Magic the Gathering is a children's card game, sure, and humor and levity are already part of the game in the Black Border, but it was always a part of the game in a way that was organic and true to the immersive world of Magic the Gathering and its flavor. There is a huge difference between the in-world humor of goblin diplomats and City of Ass, between an undead champion of the Parished and Alexander Clamilton. Again, I have no problem with Alexander Clamilton. I made a commander deck with Alexander Clamilton, and when my friends say, hey, you want to play with some silver border, I say, yeah, let me grab my Alexander Clamilton deck. But as a regular part of the Magic the Gathering flavor, aesthetic, maybe even the story and lore, no, that isn't something that I want. This wonderful world that was meticulously built and maintained for 30 years now is just turning into some weird IP mix and mission mash with tons of overly convoluted, goofy systems. Again, if this type of humor is something you enjoy, that's wonderful, and that's what unsets were. This wonderful product where that humor and those experimental mechanics could exist in a system that players could opt into. But when a sticker card becomes the next dockside extortionist in Commander or Luris of the Dream Den in Legacy, you can't opt out, nor can you from the non-serious magic mockery of whatever dumbass or necro-impotence immersion-breaking card is now just a part of the game of magic. Again, I ask you, why would they do this? Who is asking for this? Has anyone in the history of unsets ever requested that silver border cards just be black border and legal in constructed formats? The only conceivable answer, as it always seems to be these days, is money. 
Wizards of the Coast felt like they needed to make cards from this set legal in order to push more product. This likelihood is maddening, though. It's forcing sales through forcing us to opt in, and Unfinity already would have sold like hotcakes given that it included the Ravnica Shocklands in full art. But apparently that wasn't enough. It's got to sell like double hotcakes. I wonder what they're going to have to do to make it triple hotcakes next time. So here we are. Stickers are here, and there's nothing we could really do about it. It's just Magic the Gathering now. I loved unsets. I loved them. The problem isn't with them. The problem is an unset that is eternal legal fundamentally isn't an unset at all. The standard for card flavor that's suitable for an unset is different from flavor that's suitable for constructed legal expansion. Wizards of the Coast has unlimited freedom to be as ridiculous as they'd like when designing a set with no constructed ramifications. The worst part, worse even than the thought of facing down a mirror enforcer wearing a monocle, is knowing that this trend is only going to get worse. Wizards of the Coast has proven that the number one most important thing to them is their own bottom line. Everything else, especially the idea of making changes for the sake of gameplay, for the sake of improving gameplay, just becomes secondary. Don't think for a minute that doing away with the silver border had anything to do with gameplay. It had everything to do with money. And now, here we are and here will remain for as long as Magic the Gathering exists. Regardless of how we all feel about things like stickers, we're stuck with them. Hey, what's up? It's Shuffle Up and Play, and today I'm joined by Tappy Toe Claws, George, and Chef PK of YouTube fame. We are playing with level seven commander decks. I'm so used to having like one free player at the table, and now it's like actually, you didn't attack yet? Move to declare attackers. <laughs> What kind of tribal deck is this? It, it's it's great, it's great, trust me, trust me. Thanks, red player who can read. <laughs> Don't do it! Uh, Don't do it! Red player fight! Red player fight! Red player fight! That's a seven, huh? Alright, untap. He said with his true name nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> Don't blame me, she 